Welcome back. So in this video, we are going to create the buying part of our cart. Now, if you have a good understanding of this, everything else should just kind of fall in line. Uh, this is going to be a longer video. I could attempt to break this into five minute pieces, but I don't know that that makes a whole lot of sense. So I'm going to make this the long one. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, the back end structure of building a cart. So you've got choices in how you're going to build this thing. I'm going to build things the easy way. So in this scenario, you've already seen, if you watched the preceding videos, that there's a, there's a table which underlies the catalog. Every item has a unique ID. Uh, so all I'm going to store is the ID of the product and the quantity. Now this is going to be an array, and so arrays are full of key value pairs. So our keys are going to represent the IDs, and the values are going to represent the quantity. In other words, and you can think about like a ordering stuff at a Chinese restaurant, like I'll have a number 67, right? A combination, a number 35, right? It, that's like the key. That's the unique identifier of the thing. And then there's a quantity. So in this context, it'll be like, I'll have two number ones, three number twos, stuff like that. So that's the easier way to build a cart. The, the more difficult way to implement a buy, but there is upside to it in other forms, is where you have to store lots of things. So you have to store maybe the ID and the quantity and the price and the description, right? So that's the more complicated scenario of adding items to your cart. I'm only gonna do the easy one today because it's, it's easier. Now, there's reasons to do it the other way, but just so you understand, there's right off the bat, there's a couple of different ways your cart could be built. It, the easy case is gonna be just the, just the uh, ID and the quantity. Now, in terms of adding items, there's three ways that this is gonna go. So someone attempts to buy an item or they attempt to buy two items. So the simple case is when someone adds a product to their cart for the first time. Let's say they're buying baking powder and they buy two piece, two items of baking powder or whatever. That's the simple case. The uh, more or less intuitive case is when you've already bought baking powder and then you're adding two more of that to your cart because that doesn't really... Uh, constitute a new item in your cart it's just an update to the quantity in terms of what the code looks like it's not difficult but it's it's a it's a scenario that might not occur to you when you're thinking about how this is going to go and the third case is going to be if the user enters bad input so bad input being you try and buy negative six or something or you're trying to buy 3.5 apples uh, or you're trying to buy w apples right i mean as always when we're asking for input from a user there's going to be some validation and we're going to consider that to be our third case. So now that you know what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it, let's start building this card. So in my previous video, I initialized the card. I put this little bit in here to display our cart. I'm going to have that down below my adding because uh, it doesn't make sense to view the card before I've populated it. Well, I mean, you could, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense. So let me, rem let me remind you of what our form looks like. So Every one of these items is a form, uh, and so we're going to be passing both a PID, which is the ID of the item, and the quantity that you're buying. So, uh, as always, when you're processing a form, the first thing you need to do is determine whether the form has been submitted or not. The first time you visit a page, the form has not been submitted. So, I'm going to do an is set, and I can check for PID, or I can check for quantity. It doesn't matter what one I check for. Um, so, just if is set dollar sign underscore get I am using get to pass this information that's the method of my form and I'll do the PID it doesn't matter I could look for the PID or or I could look for the quan or I could look for both I'm just gonna look for the PID that is how I'm gonna indicate uh, or determine whether this form has been submitted or not that's my is set so this is my buy my buy is gonna go inside of here and then I've got those three cases that I need to account for now before I start putting things into the cart. I want to make my life easier and create some variables. So PID is going to be equal to dollar sign underscore get square bracket PID. Now, I you know, this is where things could take a really long time. I'm just telling you that that corresponds to the name of the field in the form. So that's where I get my PID. Yes, I should be worrying about things like data sanitizing here, potentially, particularly with the uh, quantity. 
Uh, you might be wondering, what was that magic thing I just did? Did I just copy and paste that? Yes, I did copy and paste that. And yes, I am going to use that shortcut. That's called duplication in uh, Notepad++. It's Control D. A lot of uh, a lot of editors support something like that. If you don't have a shortcut to paste, uh, copy and paste the previous line, it's just a copy and paste of the previous line. I don't particularly recommend copying and pasting when you're learning because that's not the best way to learn. But I'm not exactly learning this right now, so I'm going to cut corners and make this video more efficient for uh, you folks watching this at home. All right, so you'll recall that there are the three cases. There's bad input, there's a new item, and then there's essentially like an update to the quantity. The first thing I'm going to do is validate that quantity and make sure that it's not garbage, right? And so although I called it case three, it's kind of the first one I'm going to deal with. Uh, Notice I do, right, everyone's got their own syntax. I, I do mine like this, and I always co I try and comment out those closing curly braces right off the bat. This will be if uh, bad input, right, because that's what this if is uh, evaluating. So bad input. I'm going to say bad input is something that's not greater than zero, right? If you buy zero or something, well, I guess you haven't bought anything at all, have you? And in a negative, uh, I'm not entertaining that possibility. So I'll say if our quan is greater than zero. Now, that's half of it. The other half is it needs to be an integer. Now, I guess there may be a context where you would allow uh, you know, something other than an integer, but that's not going to be my deal here today. Uh, one of the things that's painful about PHP and well, when you're processing forms is that uh, the inputs are always strings. So I am expecting this to be an integer, but it's going to be a string. So a lot of the common sense approaches to evaluating whether something's an integer or not are not going to work for you. So I'm just going to use a tool. Uh, if you want to know how to val validate uh, an integer in PHP, I suggest you Google it. Or you can do this, right? So I'm going to use this uh, function called filter var. And uh, I'm going to pass it that thing that I'm looking at. And the other thing I'm going to pass it is this uh, big uh, string filter validate uh, int. Well, I guess it's not a string. Oh, I, sorry, it is a string. I was just looking at a bunch of uh, parentheses. So that right there, that will determine whether that thing is an integer. It'll return true if it is an integer. Otherwise, it won't. And here's where I'm throwing out all the zeros and negatives. There's other ways you could do this. If you don't like it, go ahead, do it some other way. It doesn't matter at all. All right, so our two good cases, the two things where we actually want to implement the by, are going to go in here. Uh, down in here, I'm just going to fill out case three because I think I'll forget to do it if I don't do it here. Uh, this is where we have a bad input. And so the right way to do this would be to have a string. Um, oops, I meant to make that a string. So I'm just I'm declaring it here, but I'm not bad input. I mean, that's a that's not a good string, right? You don't want to say that uh, you'd want to say something about a quantity. And then so for scope purposes, I'm going to uh, declare that up here and set it to an empty string. That's all about scope. So I'm declaring it here, assigning it here. And what I would do with that, the right thing to do with it, is down here in the body of your page. I'm not sure exactly where you'd want to do it here. I guess below the nav, but above the table, I'd want to shoot out that output. How gosh, see, here's where I'm getting like a, I'm, I'm getting derailed from what I actually want to do. That's the right way to display output. Now, if I'm just being a hack, which is every fiber of my being wants to be a hack, then I would just echo it right there. But I'm telling you, if you echo uh, HTML right here, that HTML is going to get printed out up above the head of your page. And that's not really where that goes. So that's friendly feed. That's, that's the right way to echo your feedback is generate the feedback here and print it out in an appropriate place. All right, so I, t I spent way too much time on that. And then you'll recall there's two scenarios, right? So this is where the, the input is not bad. And so we need to determine what one of those two scenarios we're in. So, and again, another if. You'll notice I shell out my if else's just to get the structure in place because it's brutal when you uh, don't close off a curly brace. And that's going to be, you know, if by case, something, right? We got to determine what case we're in. So what we need to do is ask ourselves, does our cart already contain the item or does it not? And the best tool that I can think of to do that is going to be an is set. Is set checks for the existence of a variable. So I'll say if set, if is set dollar sign underscore session, and I'm looking for that cart variable, kind of, sort of. 
Like, but you know that exists because I made it right here. It's not cart that I'm looking for. It's cart and right. So this is a multi-dimensional array. So the first index is cart. That's the name of the, that's the root name of the variable. And uh, what I'm looking for is a PID. So that's going to correspond to that. So in other words, I'm checking to see if item one is already in the cart. If it is, then we're going to increment the quantity. Otherwise, we're just going to add the quantity. Right? One of them is adding more of it to the cart, and one of them is just initializing it. The else is actually the initialize, so let's just do that. So that's going to look like this. Uh, oops, dollar sign underscore session cart um, pid equals uh, quan. Right? So this cart is the whole cart. Uh, the index, that's sorry, represents the ID of the item. So like if you're adding number one to your card, it's going to be one equals one. That would mean I have one of number one. I'll just, I'll take it for a test run and show you how it works, but that's it, right? So this is, so this if here is going to evaluate you wait to true if the item's already in the cart. So the else is going to represent that the item's not already in the cart. And let me show you this. This is kind of a nice way to do this. I'm going to copy that, paste that here. And so the difference between that and that is that. So that means take the quantity that's already in the cart and add whatever quantity we just picked up there to what was there. You see, they're almost the same, right? One of them is just a straight assignment. One of them is uh, plus equals. All right, so add more, that's just assign. And at this point, unless I've made some syntax errors, which is entirely likely, uh, this thing is testable. So let's go. Uh, let's go check it out. Oh, testable. That's a funny sounding word, isn't it? I'm also not sure if it's a word. All right, so there's nothing in our cart. Let me, this has item number one. The, the ID of this is number one. So I'll add to cart. And you see I've got one of number one. Uh, let's test the other case where, so add one. That should increment, and so that should be a two. And now it's a two. Uh, this is item number three. Let's say I want 66 of number three. And you can see. So see these key value pairs? So we can we know, because we built this thing, that the key is the ID of the product, and the quantity is the value of the, of the key. So ID, quantity. You can see that's all we need to store here. In the more complex scenario, this would be the ID, and this would be an array of things that we were storing about that. Um, let's also taste, uh, test out case, case three. I want to buy cat. Uh, of these, and uh, I get bad input. You see, that's not the most helpful message, but it, that's the right idea. So at this point, we have covered how you can add things to your cart, and this could be more complicated, or it could be just like this. Um, so if this makes sense to you, you're well on your way to understanding how to build a simple shopping cart. Um, displaying the cart, updating the quantities, those are things that we still have to do, but I think you could probably figure it out if, if what we've done so far makes sense to you. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we talk about emptying the cart, which is going to be super short. It's a silly one, but I'm not trying to make this video any longer than it is. And then after that, we'll talk about displaying the cart, which is going to be the thing that you're actually more interested in.